Hello, this is Cafe Talk with Pastor Glover, because as you can see, that is not me. I'm Christopher Howard, your host, and this is my guest, Miss Deb. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. Um, let's just start off with something real cool, quick. Talk about a little bit about yourself, uh, your name, what you do inside the ministry, and something cool about you. Well, um... My full name is Deborah Knight, and really? I'm not wanted by FBI or nothing, oh, so I'm okay God. to say that. Yeah. So I'm Deborah K. Knight, no matter of fact, uh, and I'm one of the lead uh, teachers for mm-hmm. the team. Mm-hmm. I, I work with the 12 to 17-year-old. Mm-hmm. Going on two years now, and oh, I wow. love it. Um, so I think something cool about me is um, I have 31 siblings, literally. Oh, yeah, you did tell me that. That yeah. is Crazy. Yeah, that's that's something fun to talk about. Wow. And uh, we're all brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. not half, not mm-hmm. all that other stuff. Fool? No, my dad had, um, my dad was out there, right? Oh, so, okay, yeah. got you. Oh, okay. But we don't call each other like, that's my half sister, yeah. that's my half brother, that's my brother, that's yeah. my sister. Uh, and so we get along that way. Yeah. And so I'm super proud of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't always understand it. Yeah. But I love that I have a big family. Y'all all know each other, too. We all know each other. I just um, learned about uh, two of my brothers within the last 10 years, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of them is older than me and one is younger than me. Oh, but wow. When we uh, were introduced, mm-hmm. we just got along. Like, it's not our fault. Let's just make it work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So we get along. Um, not very often, but sometimes we'll text each other, mm-hmm. Facebook each other, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we do stay in touch a little bit. Yeah. So I'm proud of that. Dang, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Man, I don't have that many. <laughs> got one sister and one brother. I don't know what I do with all of them. Yeah. <laughs> My dad used to drive a bus um, when uh, we were little. Mm-hmm. And all of the children on the bus was basically his. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so somebody got into a fight. Everybody was. Ooh. Everybody knew that you was gonna get whipped Ooh. by the night. <laughs> it's just understood. <laughs> it's understood. Yeah. <laughs> hey, family. <laughs> right, right, right. Watch out! Don't get into it, man, because they gonna come out the woodworks. <laughs> we, we. No, I'm delivered now. So. Oh yeah, yeah right, right. So you no go. More. I don't have to put the Vaseline. Yeah. yeah. You know. Oh, the Vaseline. Yeah, I don't have to do that. So you gotta be you gotta be real real good to know you gotta put the vaseline. Yeah, okay. yeah. Not too many people know about that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have a sister, honestly, and, mm-hmm. and this nothing to do with the ministry. She wouldn't even buy shoes unless she knew that she could fight with them. Wow. Like she would take them off and use them. You know, <laughs> honestly, even in ministry, she would wear heels that she could defend. Yeah. You know, wow. the pastor, she's like. I ain't going to tell it too much because y'all going to know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, she wouldn't buy a shoe unless she could fight with it. Yeah. yeah like, wow. So we're free now. We're yeah. Free. Thank God. Yeah. That's a good segue. Because a question <laughs> just came to my mind. That's okay. good. So um, inside life, living with Christ, we uh, it seemed like the theme right now uh, dealing with um, what Pastor has been talking about in Bible study, it's about struggle and iniquities. So... I know it's getting kind of personal, but growing up, what struggle was something that was like real kind of dear and hard for you to overcome that you have now overcame and you can like help other people with? That's amazing that you asked me that. Mm -hmm. I think the hardest thing for me is, um, let me give a little information so you understand Mm -hmm. so my mom and my dad were legally married Mm -hmm. and i'm the youngest of their children Mm -hmm. together Mm -hmm. but my dad left home before i was a year old Mm -hmm. and he had moved on and i never could understand why you couldn't make it work for me Mm -hmm. like why my mom and my dad couldn't be together as a family Mm -hmm. so that i can have a father i've always wanted to be a daddy's girl Mm -hmm. And because he wasn't there, because he showed me no affection, mm-hmm. uh, gave me no attention, mm-hmm. and some of my siblings may disagree with me, and I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I know what my experience was, right. and so I've always longed to be a daddy's girl, mm-hmm. and I never had that. Mm-hmm. And so for years growing up, I always wondered why nobody, and I literally mean nobody, could love me healthy, mm-hmm. or love me completely mm-hmm. for me. Like, yeah. Why wasn't I ever good enough? Wow. 
And I remember one day praying after being born again, maybe eight, ten years into being born again. I remember one day just thanking God, saying, God, you've been better to me than I've ever been treated before. Like, mm -hmm. you better to me than my own dad. Wow. And I remember actually hearing God say, Deborah, who have I been to you all this time? <laughs> Wow. And it crushed me because it's like I thought we were in relationship. Mm -hmm. I thought we were good. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, who have I been to you all this time? Mm -hmm. And it made me feel so bad that I felt like I had broken God's heart wow. or had disappointed him. Wow. Because all this time I've been praying to him. Yeah. All this time I thought I was in relationship with him. Mm -hmm. But I did not understand his love mm -hmm. this way. Wow. Because I didn't have it this way, mm -hmm. I couldn't understand it yeah. this way. Yeah. And so I remember being on my knees for at least 45 minutes just crying like, God, I'm so sorry. Wow. Like, I didn't realize that you were not like my daddy. Mm -hmm. And that's where I get daddy got from now. Mm. Because to me, he's been way better mm -hmm. than anybody, even including myself, yeah. have been to me. Wow. And so I have that revelation now that he really is daddy. <laughs> and so that's why I say that. But the one thing that, uh, like you asked a question, like, it was always insecurity. Like, mm. I was never good enough, mm -hmm. you know. Wow. And I understand it now that I am more than enough. Mm. I get it now. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We just vibe and I feel it. Like, <laughs> oh, man, that was good. I love it. Yeah. I, you know, when I first, uh, we were probably sitting in church one day. I, I, I think I've told you this before. I didn't really know who you were. And me and Jordan, we would always want to stay on the side that you sat on and real close because we love the way you worship and praise and, and just like glorify. I was like, oh man, like I love being around her because she boosted up, like make me want to do it even more. And then I remember you saying like, daddy God, daddy God. And I was like, it's so weird. I was like, why is she saying? I never, I've never heard that before. Like that's interesting. And, um, and, and I remember you, you've told me this before, not like that, but you've told me this before. And once I understood, I was like, wow, that makes so much sense. Why, why you would say that? So some people, you know, if you, if you, uh, at church and you hear Miss Deb saying daddy God, now you know why. And, and you understand. The, it's so the intimate. Behind. Yeah. It really, yeah. it really means wow. more to me than living mm -hmm. that wow. he's my daddy because I have an understanding and a revelation mm -hmm. that after leaving here, I go to be with them. <laughs> I really yeah. get it. Wow. I understand it. Wow. And I won't do anything to jeopardize that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I want to please him more than living. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so amazing. Finally at that place. Yeah. Yeah. You wow. caught me two years ago, three years ago. And it's like, yeah, what? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I've always loved God now, but mm -hmm. not this sincere, mm -hmm. not this intentional. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure the last five years has really, since I got here, mm -hmm. I feel like like God has just scrubbed me and cleansed me, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm born again, fresh, mm -hmm. all over again. So yeah. It's really amazing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I guess since I asked you a question, I should be transparent enough to uh, talk about my own experience, too, I Absolutely. guess. Absolutely. So... Uh, for me, the one thing that was really a struggle for me growing up that I didn't even really know until I got saved and got revelation and wisdom on things that I did wrong was similar insecurity to what you were saying. But mine was uh, mine was more like male. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, because we we're we're different genders, so we probably gonna experience right. it different ways. I. I never felt like I was the best at stuff. Um, <clears throat> just growing up as a young black dude, uh, neighborhood I grew up in, I wasn't the toughest when you're supposed to be the toughest. So even though I tried to be, I knew I never was. I wasn't as, as athletic as everybody else, so I didn't, you know what I'm saying? So you try to compare up to that type of yeah. stuff. I didn't feel like that. And I was cool, but I was also kind of smart. So it, it would kind of pull back and forth. So I had a little bit more sense to not do crazy stuff. But then that would make me uncool to not do it. So uh, in trying to achieve this weird kind of fake um, image of myself, I, I started doing things that 
was me but really wasn't me uh like sex and um talking about people uh being manipulative doing things that i thought would be would make me become the person that i wanted to be because i was insecure in myself but once i i got a hold to who god really was and got a relationship with christ he did the work without me even realizing it like i just started shifting my behavior started shifting my mind started shifting and then once I looked back on it, I was like, oh, man, you changed me that much? I didn't even realize what I was doing. And I look back on some of the people that I hurt, uh, some of the people that I manipulated. Uh, and I just, it's hard to not want to be like, man, I'm so sorry for what I did. Um, because I think it's crazy. I'm talking about it. I'm really thinking about it now. Because I really messed over a lot of people. I didn't even know what I was doing because it was... You know, we just kids. We don't understand. But I really did some real bad stuff. And um, and I'm just so thankful that I'm not that person anymore. Absolutely. And that's something that I can say God has truly brought me out of. And that I could encourage any young person or older person who is Absolutely. dealing with that feeling insecure. Not wanting to be the person God created you to be because you want to be in with other people. You don't have to go that route because Absolutely. now... You're securing yourself. I'm securing myself, and now we're influencing people to do the right thing. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, when I was at the age of the teens that we ministered to now, mm -hmm. at their age, some of their ages, I had already ran away from home. Wow. Um, just uh, probably brought um, shame to my family. Mm -hmm. um, but I was the youngest of six kids, and so I was being judged off of what older siblings were doing. Uh, Even though I wasn't doing it, yeah. it pushed me and almost like forced me to become their age when I wasn't mm -hmm. even ready for it. Mm -hmm. I was accused of liking boys mm -hmm. when I had never even had a conversation with the boys. Wow. But because other older siblings had mm -hmm. done that, I was accused as if I would do the same thing. Wow. You know? And so it pushed me out there so fast to me. By the time I was 23, mm -hmm. I was so burnt mm -hmm. from the world. When I tell you that God saved me 37, 38 years ago, mm -hmm. I really, really mean that. Like, yeah. I didn't go back to partying. Mm -hmm. I didn't go back to uh, smoking my two packs of cigarettes mm -hmm. a day. I didn't wow. go back to my beer. Yeah. When God saved me, God saved me. Yeah. And I'm really, really super proud of that. <laughs> now, had to been growth since then? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm so honored. Mm -hmm. Because, see, I was the fool of my family. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, oh, you won't do it? Mm -hmm. Hold on, I got it. I got it. <laughs> right. like, oh, you're not going to drink that? Yeah. Yeah. We, we're not going to waste that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and so they followed my lead, even though I was the youngest. Yeah. And, and I had just uh, recently a lady tell me and three sisters, we were at a women's retreat. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you're the eldest. Mm -hmm. And I understood what she was saying. Mm -hmm. One of my siblings like, no, she's the youngest. Mm -hmm. And they, she said, no, she's the eldest. Mm -hmm. Like, she's going to be the one to help you all. Mm -hmm. She's going to be the one to influence you all. Mm -hmm. Now, we are already all, I ain't going to tell my mm -hmm. age. I'm jumped up. But we up there. Yeah. And so I'm the youngest. You so like imagine, the Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just honored. And, and, I, and I take responsibility. Mm -hmm. For what God have put on my life. Yeah. Like I'm not trying to excuse it away. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to hide it. Like oh my yeah. God I hope nobody knows it. Yeah. I want everybody to know that I love God. Yeah. That I'm sold out completely mm -hmm. to God. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and I love having fun. Before we got on. Yeah. We were cracking up. Yeah. We were oh, having definitely. fun. right? Like, Because yeah. I love to go mm -hmm. there. I'm still trying and to I want joke. people to know that you can have fun inside of God. Yes. Oh my yeah. God. That's like. Yes. I'm not finna die because I'm serving God. Yeah. Like, Jesus already died. In the yeah. sense of me dying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, let's live. Yeah, let's live. You know, let's live. Yeah. And so, you know. Yeah, let's let's talk about that a little bit more. Because I think uh, sometimes people outside of uh, the body of Christ and even inside the body of Christ, we have this idea and image of what living for Christ is. And it's like, yes. And guess what the like, word of God called that? Yeah. Stiff neck. Like, you're so stiff. Like, but he had a word for that. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, oh, oh, stiff joke. neck. No, and I'm not trying to be. Yeah. I'm not, I'm no, not, seriously, though. But, like, let's have fun inside yeah. of God. The joy. Yeah, why what, not? What is said why about not? God? Yeah. Like, like so uh, let's live it up. Yeah. Let's, you know, like. Right. Like, I don't want 
to say I live for God and look like I've been sucking on lime. Right. Like, I think lime mm -hmm. is stronger than lemon, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go there. So people always say lemon. Yeah. I'm going to say lime. Like, mm -hmm. I just don't want that. I want the joy of my salvation to shine. Mm. I want to have fun. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And even when I go too far with joking, mm -hmm. it, it's a nudge on the inside. Like, yeah. okay, Deb, that's Time enough. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I know when to stop. Mm -hmm. I know when to pull back. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I feel that nudge, immediately I repent. So mm -hmm. I know not don't go no yeah. farther. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I love I love to travel. Yeah. I love to have mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. I love to go out to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, when the <laughs> movie theater, you have food, oh I'm going to eat it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Same. Yeah. You can't buy me with no food. Don't play with me. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> you know, that, that movie that but she like food. Yeah. Don't play. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> No, but I love having fun. I love yeah. I love being youthful, mm -hmm. you know, and there's some things I just can't do no more, mm -hmm. but I love uh, being around young people yeah. because they, they provoke you mm. to like, like, like so many people doing this slow death, mm -hmm. whereas I want to just live. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to die. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not ready to die. I have yeah. so much life yeah. left in me, yeah. you know. Um, I know that I'm a senior now, mm -hmm. according to my age, but I ain't finna die. Yeah. I'm just like, bring it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that juju on that beat and nothing <laughs> like that, so I ain't trying to do all that. <laughs> That's a little. <laughs> I heard Sister Heather say that the other day. I don't know do all that. But if you put on some uh, music, I, my daughter said, Mommy, I don't care what you do. You all your dance the same. You can tell you go to church. Are you dancing? Are you dancing? Show us, please. I ain't finna do that. I'm not finna do that. I'm not holding my stomach in we, no we can dance together if you want to. Brother Chris, I'm not finna do that. I see. <laughs> <laughs> see how you dance, <laughs> I do not dance like you know, that. I, I dance. He say, he's, she said all my dance moves is the same, right? She's like, my, you could be listening to uh, Luther Vandross yeah. and you go do that holy dance. <laughs> she said all your dance moves is the same. I said, it's okay. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Same but I know, how to, I know how to have fun. Yeah. It's my thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how to do the TikTok or anything yeah. like that. I've seen it. I don't know how to do all of that movement because yeah. I get locked up because yeah. I can't do all that. Me neither. But I can't I do, do it either. But I like having fun. Mm -hmm. I just do. Yeah. You know, so. it's, it's difficult to influence a generation, influence people that are not in the, the body of Christ if all they see is the person who's dying a slow death. Like, mm -hmm. like you saying you're living for Christ, and it's like you're not impacting nothing. You're not influencing nobody. You're not even having fun with your life. That's what Jesus is, to read the Bible all day and all night <laughs> and not, and not live, <laughs> not talk to people. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, man, like, I ain't even going to go. I was about to say, I know some, some older people that's like, I we talk I talk about something like like I'm dancing doing something oh no that's the devil like you ain't supposed to be dancing like that I guess David was full of demons because he could dance out his <laughs> dance out his clothes they would have whipped him I guess he was just impacted with demons. I, I don't know what was going on with him <laughs> let them tell it I ain't gonna dance out my clothes not look at yeah. it together but. I am gonna have fun, brother. Yeah, I, I love really it. am. I, I really love am. It. As much as I can, mm -hmm. you know, without going past that line. You mm -hmm. know, I want to be decent mm -hmm. and I want people to respect me, but mm -hmm. I also want to bring joy to people's mm -hmm. lives, you know. Like, um, sometimes I can smile and people say, Man, I love your smile. Mm -hmm. And you can't hardly see it anymore because of these the thinking masks. <laughs> but I love smiling because smile is universal mm -hmm. and I just love uh, being free enough mm -hmm. to smile, yeah. you know, um, there's some days that things were so hard to, I thought the only way out was suicide, mm -hmm. you know, to be wow. honest. Yeah. And, um, I remember God sparing me. I remember having a handful of pills. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. I just, I can't do it no further. Mm -hmm. I can't go any further. Like, yeah. This is too painful. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to get water mm -hmm. while I had the handful of pills. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking down this narrow hallway that I live. And I'm saying, God, please don't let me go out like this, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to end it, but not this way. Yeah. Like, maybe a tree could fall on me yeah. or something. Like, you know, something I can't control. I don't want to go out like this, God, you know. <laughs> And, and I had children yeah. at the house with me, but I was tired of the pain. Mm. And so 
because God has spared me, mm -hmm. because the devil didn't win, mm -hmm. I want to be that light for mm -hmm. any and everybody. I don't care what the age is. Yeah. Uh, if you're uh, older or elderly, I'm going to respect you. Mm -hmm. If you're young, I want to entice you to to experience the joy of serving Christ. Mm -hmm. Like this is so important to yeah. me. Yeah, this so important. Yeah, this is so super important mm -hmm. to me. You know. Yeah, so. it is. Um. <laughs> okay, so we're about to close, but I don't think that I would be a great host if I didn't ask you one crazy question to just mix stuff up, you know? Okay. Uh, <laughs> don't be disappointed with the answer, cause I'm that I'm that girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! So I'm that one. Very last question. Okay. Um, what is what is your favorite joke? And, and and you know I don't I can't think of any mm -hmm. jokes and I remember you said you were gonna ask me yeah. that and I and you know I can't think of anything. Can't think of any jokes. I really mm -hmm. can't. What makes you laugh the most? How about that? Um, what makes me laugh the most? Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, when I tell a joke, mm -hmm. I think it's so funny. My kids say, Mom, you're the only person I know laugh at their own joke. Yeah. I laugh so hard to like I can't catch my breath. Yeah. I'm on the floor. Yeah. But it gotta be it's not it gotta be something spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Um I think what what makes me um laugh the most is seeing people happy. Like mm. like if you do something funny mm -hmm. and you think it's funny, mm -hmm. just to see that you're happy yeah. or that you're laughing, that makes me happy. Oh. That makes me laugh. Wow. I love to see other people laugh. Wow. If that sounds, I mean, no, means, no, I, but I do. I love mm -hmm. seeing people happy. Yeah, and, and that makes me laugh. Like, wow, yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Miss Deb. Thank you for having Thank me. You. I know y'all ran out of people to do it. No, so definitely that. not. <laughs> no, definitely not. This was great. I'm pretty sure what you said helped a lot of people. You are very Fred. inspiring, very consistent, very, very uh, encouraging. That's one of your best qualities, encouraging woman of God. Every time you see somebody, man of God, woman of God, like, like you the first person that ever called me that, period. Like, first person that ever said that to me. I was like, man of God, I was like, I must be. Like, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. You are a, you are an encourager, and it, it, it brings light to this ministry for sure. So I thank you so much for being here with us. Um, and wow. I, <laughs> I'm a crab baby oh. to my heart. Got the camera. Um, <laughs> our, <laughs> join us next time <laughs> on Cafe Talk. Next week, our our next guest will be Brother Jameson from the Young Men of Valor. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you. Give me some. <laughs>